Hi, Clay of Insire Studios. In this video, I'm going to be highlighting the removal of garbage and bloatware that comes pre-installed with Windows 10 when you get the system set up. So let's get this started. Before we get this going, I just want to bring up that in the previous video I went over the crate installation media for the more advanced install of Windows 10. You can find it linked right up here in this corner. And also any of the files required for this video will be linked in the description below for your convenience. So you got Windows 10 installed or you bought a brand new system that came with Windows 10 already on it. And you went through all of the setup and you get to the desktop. Just click that start menu and you see all that glorious bloatware that is there. Not to mention the background data that's also being collected and sent to Microsoft that is all taking up system performance on the actual computer itself. Now there is a way to actually pretty much disable all of this and reclaim all of that performance and get rid of that ugly garbage that you see in that start menu. And that is what we're going to be covering here right now. You will need the program Windows 10 Debloater. You can find it again, link in the description below. It'll take you directly to the GitHub page. And once you're there, click on Clone or Download, and you're going to download this actual zip. Once you get that zip downloaded, go ahead and extract it, either with the program that you wish to use for extracting, or if it's a brand new system again, you can just open it up. And Microsoft is able to unzip it itself and extract it to where you want. Personally, I put it straight onto the C drive just for general convenience. So I just leave it at C colon backslash and then tell it to extract. Once that is done, make sure to open up the actual folder that it's in and we're going to copy the location. So just click on where the location is, make sure it's all highlighted, right click on it and tell it to copy or use control C. The reason for this will become quite apparent in just a little bit. But the next thing you're going to do is right click on start menu and make sure to launch PowerShell in admin mode. So that's the PowerShell in parentheses admin. It'll bring up the UAC, yes, because you want to run it as such. And that'll allow you to use the program to make sure it runs properly to get rid of all this garbage. The first thing we're going to be doing though is change the execution policy to be unrestricted. So it'll be set dash execution policy Note the caps, they are important. After that, hit space, unrestricted, space, dash force. Once you hit enter, then it'll actually have it fully unrestricted again for convenience of the actual program itself. Now, we need to get to the actual files that you're going to be using to execute the bloatware removal. So now it's time to change the directory. You type in cd, space, then right click and it'll paste where that directory is for where you put those files. That's what makes it very convenient and why we copied the location. You can also hit control V instead if you wish to, either or works, and then just hit enter and it'll change the directory over. And now we're going to have to choose which script to run. Now I'm going to be going through the general user interface of the GUI. So you could either just type it out yourself with dot backslash Windows 10 debloater GUI dot PS1, or you can go back to where the actual folder is, right click on the file itself, go to rename, copy that. Again, make sure you got the dot backslash, then right click on it and add the dot PS1 if you do not see the full extension and uh, then it'll launch the file once you hit enter. If you wish you just do a system prep or whatnot, you could also do that. Just follow the instructions on the GitHub page. But as I stated, we're gonna go over the GUI. Once you get that all set up and hit enter, it'll launch into the GUI itself and you'll get presented with a bunch of options. Now, you can just click and have it do the general removal of uh, the bloatware that's there. Or you can do the custom whitelist blacklist, which I again prefer to do. This is more advanced for systems if you wish to just remove garbage that you don't need such as the Xbox app stuff or even the Windows Store you could just completely get rid of it. Now this is for you know niche scenarios like if you know you're only going to be using the system for like 
say texting or word processing or just general web browsing you don't need this extra stuff on there and it just reclaims just a little bit more for the system but select and uh, check mark what you wish once that is done go to the top and tell it to actually save the custom uh, PS1 close that out and then tell it to run the custom bloatware removal instead and as you'll see on the actual PowerShell it'll tell you what is actually being removed and the number of things and once that is done it'll actually alert you that it has finished and removed it now if that's all you want to do go ahead and close it out but usually I go through I disable Cortana you don't need that stop edge browser from taking over and opening up uh, PDF actual documents you probably don't need that as well you just use your own general web browser or a separate program but make sure though definitely is what I would recommend is disable the telemetry data tracking and also of course the registry keys for the bloatware to prevent it from being reinstalled now you could also have it unpin the tiles inside the start menu just in case it's giving you issues on uh, just getting rid of them but you can just click on it then just right click and just unpin it all yourself and also you can remove OneDrive I don't use OneDrive so if you don't use OneDrive just have it do it it'll go through and completely get rid of that as well once that is done go ahead and click the X and we can close out a PowerShell and you're done with that but there's still one more thing to go through and that is to use the program shut up 10 it's not an eloquent name for the program or a program in general but it is just actually quite I think direct for what it does is it'll let you go through and disable things that you just don't need on there now this is just a dot exe so you just download it and open it up I recommend going to actions and using the recommended and somewhat recommended settings on there and once that is done it'll ask if you want to create a restore port point yes go ahead and create that restore point just in case something goes wrong I've never had anything go wrong but it is nice to have that option just in case now red means that option is enabled green means that option is disabled so if you're done with that and you just want to leave it as such you can click that X and restart the computer Personally, I go through again, I read through it, I'm um, be a more advanced user as such, like I disable, make sure, actually, actually I re-enable the peer-to-peer -peer stuff for Windows updates. This is for if, say, a Windows update goes through on one system, I can get it on my other systems just a little bit faster if it deems it that it's ready to do it. But you can leave it disabled, that's perfectly fine. But make sure you have deferred Windows updates set on. That means that if there's an actual update it will not just randomly restart your computer on you while you're in the middle of doing something because that's a horrible thing to have to happen on you there's no reason why it should because you don't want it restarting on you in the middle of you actually doing something right I mean come on that's a horrible thing to have to happen so instead if you're on Windows Update 1903 in the bottom right corner in the system tray it'll show the Windows icon in an actual border stating that there's a Windows update for you so when you can just save what you're doing and just restart or shut down the system and it'll apply that update now there are a few other things that you could potentially do go into the group policy editor but this is for just a couple extra inkling things to potentially push through the system and also if you're on Windows 10 home edition it doesn't matter you can't actually access this so this will at least go for the general user to get rid of a bunch of the bloatware and garbage that comes pre-installed on Windows 10 and just reclaim you know some of that extra performance that you could be using for the system itself not to mention if you're on say a laptop or whatnot this stuff is still taking up uh, just some battery but you know some of the battery usage and things this just make sure that you don't have this going on and you just do it just a little bit more being reclaimed for like battery life maybe it's not much but hey you know it's a little something extra I'd say that this really wraps up this video and concludes it I mean there's other things to use like a really advanced power user install for Windows 10 but that is going into the ISO file and stuff you can find that on Chris Titus's uh, Chris Titus text videos he's a really good uh, tutorials on doing things on like Linux and Windows 
to uh, really dig into things that you can just disable and whatnot, I highly recommend this channel. But for this, this one's over. My next video, I'm going to be going over backing up the Windows 7 up, Windows 7, Windows 10 operating system itself. And this uh, includes Windows 10 in case something goes wrong, you'd be able to restore it at a future date. And also having another piece of software that'll go through and back up personal files on your system itself so that you don't lose an extra peace of mind that you can have these stuff backed up without having to worry about doing it yourself. And um, yeah, just make it a little easier on you so you don't have to worry about losing things like personal memories and whatnot. That's really it. Like this video if you liked it. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you have any comments, suggestions, or questions, leave it in the comment se section below. And if you liked what you saw here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I hope you come back for more and have a good day.